and I'm gonna tell you the five mistakes that people make when taking pictures of cars. And I'm gonna teach you how to fix those, all right? Yo, so today we're gonna get into some car photography tips today. Um, it's gonna be fun. We got Tyler who is holding the camera and then we got my boy who, as you can see, right over here, he just got here. This is Evie, he's the one with the nice car. What up, Stud Muffin? Hey. Tyler, this is Evie, Evie, this is Tyler. What's up, bro? Hey, dude, killer truck, dude. Nice to meet you, man. That's uh, she's all right. This area right here, man, like I was thinking like we get a shot like right here and then, um, Wow, Holy bro. noise, Batman! Does, does he mind? I think we'll be okay. It says we're not supposed to park here, but uh, I think we'll be okay. AKA park here. Yeah, I think we're gonna set it over there, like right in the middle, okay. and then uh, we're gonna move it kind of like sideways with the tires slightly to the left, like this, yeah. and then, um, yeah, let's do it. Your left, my left? Yeah. Yeah, go. Yes. I see that people do all the time is a mistake is that everybody just shoots at eye level dude that's the worst way to look at a car everybody sees the car at eye level so obviously you got to get the angles as you can see I'm sitting on the floor right now and on top of that um, we're getting some nice leading lines in this image that's just pointing straight directly at the car and then make sure to get like a nice little space on the top because just in case you want to do this as a wallpaper or something got some space on top to be able to manipulate it afterwards hey you might want to stand there that looks good make sure to get different angles all right shoot from low shoot from high shoot from low shoot high shoot low shoot above shoot from the sides make sure to switch that up because nobody wants to see your really boring freaking standing alive let's keep shooting Tyler just said he's about to climb me on some shots. He mentioned on 7200, okay? It's not fair. But anyway, I'm gonna hit you with number two. The biggest mistake that people do is that they shoot at too low of an aperture. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? It's cool and everything like that to shoot at low aperture because you want that sweet, creamy bokeh. But the truth is, is that you'll probably get a lot of stuff out of focus. One of the best examples I can say is like whenever you're shooting shoes. Take a look at this shot, for example. It looks like it's all in focus, but it's not. Only one shoe is in focus compared to the other one. So that looks kind of bad. And the reason why is because the aperture is way too low. So sometimes you're gonna have to shoot a little bit higher, all right? Obviously that means that you're gonna have to compensate with the shutter speed and ISO and whatnot. But keep that in mind so that you can get the whole car in focus or the whole thing or both tires in focus. You don't wanna just get one piece of the tire in focus. You want the whole thing. Make sense? How are those looking, bud? Nice. Dude, compression on this is so clean. Oh yeah, Evie, come check it out. I think that we're done with this area. You think it looks good? Played out, let's go somewhere else. Okay. He just said, shut up, Joseph. Let's get the heck out of here. Like out. I said, let's just go <laughs> So this way, it doesn't look like much but just go ahead and turn it a full 360 degrees. That's, I don't know where that's from, but it's like a meme or something. But anyway, this is like a perfect shot over here. <laughs> Looks delicious all the way down and we got that nice over there. So, Avi, I'm gonna leave it up to you, man. You wanna get a booty shot? You wanna get a front shot, sideways? Front shot. Front shot, front shot. Oh, all right, set it up. And I went from a bag to a bag to a bag. I remember me and mama used to ride the cab. Pull up by the light, no more lease, we pay cash Show up to a crib, had the keys to a jack That's that light work, flexing so much it hurt Used to rock him at dimes, now Versace down my shirt I remember them days, we couldn't wait for the first Finally made me a meal, now we eating off the verse What a lot of people do is they expose for the shadows Meaning that you can see all of it, but the highlights are completely blown out now that's cool or whatever, but as far as my experience when shooting with Sony, I've even been able to expose for the highlights and then bring up the shadows afterwards. And that right there will give you a shot like this. However, you can get really fancy and since the wind is going crazy, I'm gonna send it over to my man, North Borders, and he's gonna tell you exactly how to make this look 10 times better than I ever could. Hey Joey, how about you just let me handle this one and I'll explain it from here on out. 
So if you want to professionally do it, like most of the other pro car photographers, you can do it this way. So I'm going to grab this image, this photo as well of the lights, uh, like the front and the back here as well. And then like a really underexposed shot here of the tail lights as well. And I'm just going to right click and edit all these in Photoshop. Once all your photos are in like sort of the one panel here, we're just going to select both of them by holding down shift and then select to lighten on your blend mode here. And then it's going to merge all of them together. You want to zoom in and just check that it hasn't moved. Like the tripod sometimes, like when you take each one of these photos, sometimes your images can move slightly. So you can just click over them just to see if the camera has moved slightly, which I don't think it has, which is great. Otherwise you can just use the arrow keys just to move the photo up or down slightly just to rematch it. Anyway, I'm going to hit command S that's going to save the file and it should pop up back here in Lightroom in a second. Now we can just give it an edit before, after. So you heard it from North Borders. That's what I'm going to try and do. So on this next part, I'm going to go ahead and shoot underexposed, overexposed, and then like something for the ground or something I think he does. So anyway, I'm going to do that. I don't know if they're going to come out as good as his, but I'm going to, I'm going to try I don't know. to. I think he's got you on some car. Yeah, dude, we'll nah, see. man. If you guys don't follow him yet at North Borders, he's nasty, bro. He's, he's the goat on the car stuff, man. Quit looking at the car, man. I've seen so many people that they take these sick car photos, but it just doesn't look as good as all these dope photographers like I was talking about my boy North Borders. Why? The main reason is because North Borders, along with myself and everybody else who takes sick car photos, well, I don't take sick car photos, but you know what I mean. If you're gonna take the time to shoot cars, make sure that the landscape, make sure that everything looks good. Look, I'm gonna tell you something real quick. I wrote a script slash story, some of it was live action, some of it was done on video. This whole story was about photography. And the premise of the story was, what would happen if you didn't have all these memory cards that can hold so many photos? What if you only had three photos to take in your entire life. What would you do with those three photos? Would you be taking selfies all the time? Would you be snapping photos in high burst mode all the time? Or would you take the time to composite your picture to the best of your abilities? What would you do? That's how you should look at when you're taking pictures of cars. Make sure that you're picking the background, the landscape, everything on purpose because every single photo is a painting. Hence the reason why they keep talking about the Mona Lisa. Imagine if people kept talking about your photo for the time to come. Boom. Pew, 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 pew. So anyway, that's why we just jump from location to location like crazy and now we're heading into this warehouse and maybe we'll get into a little bit of light painting stuff which I've always wanted to do. So here we go. By the way, some of you may be wondering, yo dude, who is that handsome young Mexican guy in the Audi? Well, this is one of my best friends, Evie. He actually runs an Instagram account called autofocus which is the real autofocus it's all about cars he's an engineer he gives you a background on stuff that you may not even think about he is at the real autofocus are you there are you gonna plug your channel no you're gonna leave no Make no me no do right it. here the real autofocus ladies and gentlemen hey invite your grandma invite your auntie invite everybody that you know you know what i'm saying yeah it's invite, a real deal it's invite real your deal. grandma all right let's get inside so it's pretty much pitch black in here so you basically gotta turn this into a set we're gonna make this look like a million bucks check this out yeah, it doesn't look that great. Anyway, so. And the last mistake that people make is that they don't use the right lighting. Now I understand when photographing cars, it's a lot more difficult because it's a big car and you don't really have control over all the lights. So you have to be shooting outside and I get that. So the best thing that I can tell you is this. Number one, shoot at the right time of day, whether it's golden hour or if it's at nighttime. But if it is at nighttime, make sure that you're in an area that is well lit. You don't want to force the ISO way too high. If not, you're going to get some grainy images. Hence the reason why we can control all the lighting right here. Ejecto Cito, cuz! Oh, yeah. Buddy boy! Ejecto Cito, cuz! Hey, look in the center. Look in the center. Look in the center. Look in the center. What? Look in the center. It's all wrong. That's the too fast. Your fears like, it's all out of whatever, but you know what I mean. Cha-ching. Now put your blouse back on. We need to get a rag, basically, because it started sprinkling a little bit. So we need to get a rag to go ahead and clean this up. So this one right here is basically, is we're going to try and show off just the whole thing that's in the background because it's so pitch black. This isn't a hair light. Like, uh, background light, basically. Those headlights, though. I mean, I said headlights. Yeah, the headlights. Uh, he can yeah, edit. The, he the can, headlights. You can edit that out, right? 
can edit it out, you know, right, please? This the this the hood right here. Now the hood. This right here where the engine go. Right. This here. is how you know I was excited to shoot. Like I didn't even get myself a license plate. <laughs> hey know, man, y'all want to find uh, him? Hey, find him. Zero five eight. Two one right there. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go start a GoFundMe page so uh, <laughs> y'all can help me pay for that. I know we we're acting stupid. I'm over here like, why isn't it turning on? <laughs> Need battery. Oh. Shout out to my boy. If you guys haven't seen the video, I lost my best friend. Feel free to click right up there. That's all I was talking about. Rest in peace. He's not. Well, just watch the video. Anyway, I think that that is it. Go ahead and like this video and subscribe because that's what all the cool kids are doing. Follow me on Instagram at Keyboard King if you want to see all the behind the scenes and all that. Bro, you went way too fast. Now it's just three rings. Okay, last one, I promise. Last one. You ain't gonna get this one. But anyway, I will catch you guys on the flip side. Boom.